on today's episode of Gathering the Kings. Any industry for that, that matter, you set the tone for, for what you're trying to do. So if you come in with a bad attitude or we're just we're just painters or we're just another company, that's what that's people you're going to track. That's what you're going to get. So, yeah. you know, it's a big part. So you got to really think about that stuff when, you know, just day to day, just coming in in the morning. It isn't, you know, it isn't just a polo or whatever it is that, you know, the color in the background, or, you know, it's, it's the way you talk to them. Uh, right. You know, it's the way you treat them, being involved in their lives, um, you know, doing what you can to help them out and show them that, you know, you want to bring value to them and, you know, improve their life, not just your own. You are listening to Gathering the Kings with Chaz Wolf, featuring fellow seven, eight, and even nine figure business owners who have real battle scars from business and life, but have prevailed as the king that they are designed to be. We welcome high performing entrepreneurs to the stage in order to reveal the real of the real on what it takes to build a successful business today. We dissect the good and bad decisions they've made along the way that give a true and accurate picture of the journey of success and how you too can get there. Through this dialogue, you will learn the value of growing your network and surrounding yourself with power players and kings like today's guest. Grab your pen and notebook because we're about to dive in. What's up, Gathering the Kings Nation? Chaz Wolf, I'm your host. I'm coming back to you this week. My guest is Chad Turpin of Turpin Painting. This guy, I wish you guys could see the uh, the video be because his logo, we talk about it in the show, man, but his logo is just, I mean, he's a painter, right? So it's colorful, it's a color wheel, but it looks like tie-dye. It's so creative. This guy is fun to talk to. He'd be fun to work for. If you don't know him, you need to know him. Um, this guy brings the heat. He's super real, authentic. He gives a real picture of what it took. Um, he's got a great history and a story that he tells you. Um, and I think that you particularly listening today are going to pull out at least one thing that's going to grow your business. So grab that pen and paper. Here it comes. All right, everybody. Chaz Wolf gathering the Kings. I've got Chad. Chad, is it, is it Terp? Terpe? Like give us your Turpin. 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 Where my friends say Terp. So Terp. I was gonna say, because on Zoom, on Zoom it says Terp. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it easy. So like you know me forever. It. I love it, dude. Well, I'm gonna call you Terp to the show then. Sounds good. Terp. Chad. Another, another, another one of my brothers, another king coming to the show. What kind of business you got, man? Uh, we got a painting business, commercial residential here in Evansville, Indiana. I love it. I love it. Okay, so um Tell me at this level in the business, like we, we've had some offline conversations around just, you know, how you've been like crushing it in this industry and, and just some of your views around tradesmen versus businessmen, stuff like that. But I want to know at this level, because we're going to get into your history a little bit at this level in the game. Why do you keep doing it? Why do you keep pressing forward? Uh, it, it's, you know, it's just growth. I mean, in general, you know, you got to always keep pushing yourself. You're always going to find out. Um, how far you can go and you know uh, we, we want to change the game we want to change the whole landscape for what people expect when hiring a professional painters so um, yeah. what we've dealt with over years and what I've seen just growing up in the trade is we've gotten a bad rep uh, just from what past painters um, in general have done and, and what people are known for so you know yeah. we want to change that change that landscape and what people expect and you know what they what they see and get when they're hiring a professional painter so Absolutely. I, I love that. And and although, you know, maybe to the listener, maybe to some other folks that that seems maybe, you know, I don't know, a little cheesy to change the industry or, or give someone a better rap. But I know that people are motivated differently. And there are guys out there who are, you know, they want to make money. They want to help other people. Um, but you clearly, like everything you just said is, I want to I want to change an industry. I want to change the thought of what people think of an industry. That's pretty big thinking, man. Like, have you always thought like that? Or is that developed over the course of time? You know, tell us more. I think, I think that's just the way I, way I grew up in life. I mean, I always just wanted to be the best at whatever I did. So, you know, whatever. I mean, if it was playing sports as a kid, uh, you know, whatever it was, I mean, I was super competitive. So, you yeah, know, we've seen a seen an opening in this market here. Um, and I just happened to get into it um, back when I was younger and looking for a career, looking for something that I thought would be stable. Yeah. Um, growing up and that's how I got into the trade. Um, and so you uh, didn't get into the business thinking necessarily right now that you'd be at the level that you are, or did you? No, I, I actually just started, uh, working for another company. 
Um, I didn't even plan on starting my own business. That wasn't even the plan. But uh, wow. the economy kind of has, uh, you know, in life, you know, throws different things at you all the time. So that's right. You, you got to be willing to adapt or change. And and uh, personally, myself, when I got into the, you know, the trade, it was, you know, you can make good money, good benefits, things like that. Um, but at the same time, you know, I didn't know what the economy was going to do. So right. We had to kind of shift gears uh, when the economy kind of took its turn, uh, was laid off. And the uh, industry that I thought, you know, I'm not ever going to get laid off or I'm always going to make a steady amount of money or whatever sure. I want to do. Sure. And my whole mindset changed when, when you get laid off and you got to sit around. Uh, yeah. I'm not a beggar. I'm a hard worker. Um, I know what yeah. I bring to the table. So um, yeah, yeah. that's kind of where we went. I love it. I love the mindset there. Um, I, I love to do little recaps through the show uh, for the listener, but I think we can all relate to what you just said. Like, I didn't really want to beg anybody for an opportunity, right? Like, like as entrepreneurs, that's who's listening today, entrepreneurs, right? You know, it doesn't mean that we can't work for somebody else. It just probably means that creating our own path, right? Is, and this is what you just said. Like, I, I wasn't going to beg someone else for the opportunity. I know my value. And so what that often leads entrepreneurs to is, how do I create my own path? I know the value that I bring. I know maybe I don't have all the details figured out, right? But but I know I'm valuable. I know I can do something with some like energy and ambition. Yeah. And so for you in that moment, it was kind of like it, it it took you kind of getting kicked to the curb. Basically, yeah. Yep. Even it even went back to school uh before I actually started the business because that wasn't even, you know, I thought I'm getting out of this trade forever and I'm not getting back wow. into it. You know, because I said, like, I'm just going to go back to school. I'm going to get into what I really wanted to, which was always, you know, sports. I was thinking about being a sports agent or something of that line because that was what I knew. And I know the value in, in you know, athletes. I've always been into it. Yeah. Uh, and sports and things like that. So I'm like, well, you know, I know numbers. I know, you know, you know, if it comes down to a baseball player, you know, based on what they've done in the past, what they do now. Um, and you know, what we expect them to do, you know, what their value would be. So that's what I got, went back to school for. And, Painting found me again while I was back in school. So, you know, that's kind of where it took off. So I was working for myself uh, while going back to school and and I actually did pretty good um, on my own the first year. So two years into school, I said, well, this isn't, yeah. this isn't the route we're going to take. We're going to get up out of here. So I basically walked out of school uh, with the help of my counselor who actually even kind of pointed me in that direction. So nothing's guaranteed wow. in college. And yeah. that's something I always try and emphasize to people these days and younger kids these days. Nothing's guaranteed there. So we, yeah. we push that and sell that to kids. And, you know, it's beneficial to the colleges and them, but it's always beneficial to us. Yeah. Not always. Maybe not. So, yeah. you know, yeah. nothing against going to school. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of ups, you know, there's a lot of positive to it, but yeah. there's also some downfalls like anything else in life. So. Hundred percent. Yeah, I always, I always kind of joke. My wife's a dental hygienist, and so thank goodness that she went to school, right? Like, thank goodness that that the guy that was operated on my appendix when it was about to rupture, thank goodness he went to school. But, yeah. but it 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 doesn't mean that everybody needs to go to school. And I, I love that that perspective. And I think most people who are listening, you know, at a six figure level, maybe not all of them, um, you know, went to school, but I'm sure a good percentage of them at least started. Um, and like me and you, it's just like, you know what? This just isn't for me. Um, and if it's about the money or about like security, to your point, I love the, sec- the like the, how you switched the, the, the whole storyline of, I thought I had security in employment, but, but I didn't. And actually, you doing your own thing has brought you so much more security because you're in control, right? Yep. And that's something I've always, uh, always liked being in control. Even as a kid, even playing sports, so uh, it goes all to me. It goes all the way back then. I was always a pitcher, or quarterback, so I like to know what's going on, you know, what yeah. everybody else is doing, and and uh, you know, I feel comfortable in that situation. I'm most comfortable, you know, knowing that. I think that you know a lot of people are. I mean, that's what we need is stability and structure, and and you know, when you can control that, you know what's going to happen. It eases your mindset, yeah, um, and what's going to happen, and what you know your future holds. So. Yeah, hundred percent. I think a lot of people shy away from that, right? Because control is like, oh, you're a control freak or whatever. It's like, well, at the end of the day, we we both know that there are things we can't actually control. But if I'm controlling the things that I can, then it the outcome is 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 going to be at least somewhat predictable. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The rest you kind of fall into place, and you can actually see if you're if you're planning and you know yeah. know you're, what you're doing. Exactly. Okay, let's go back. We're back in time. Okay, and. What I want to know is as you were building, right? Especially when you were say you were kind of on your own, maybe a couple guys, you hadn't hit the seven figure mark yet. And 
there was a good decision that you made along the way. You kind of already gave us one with you know leaving school, um, but I'm gonna maybe I'm gonna maybe pick you for another one. What was something a decision that you made in the business that a guy listening right now has got a pen and paper and and you listening or you giving him this nugget is going to help him save time and money right now? What good decision did you make? Well, good decision. Uh, separating ourselves. I mean, what separates yourself from other businesses locally or or whoever your market is? I mean, I think the the main thing is is brand recognition and 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 letting people know what value you bring bring to the table and and knowing your market. So you know, yeah. you can trust with your customers and you, you show them the value and what you add. Um, you know, that kind of how, how have you done that practically? Like, obviously, we've talked about your incredible logo behind you. And, and if you're not, if you can't see the video here, you just listen to an audio. He's got an incredible tie dye, huge, like just super loud, like, hey, <laughs> here's a, here, here's where we are. <laughs> yeah, it's a big color it. wheel. So it's actually a big color wheel that the painters use. And we're going, you know, out to do estimates and things like that. And something yeah. to me, that was something that everybody associates with a painter. You know, everybody that's ever been to a paint store or ever had to pick out colors to paint their house, they see that paint will, they know yeah. what the, you know, they know what the what the person's there to do, you know, when they see that. So that was something that I think, like I said, brand brand recognition, you know, people got to know when you pull up, you know, it's something. What, what is this? It's like Nike. It's like Adidas. It's like anything else. You got to know when you see that AT&T logo, you know, you know what service you're going to get and what they're there to do. So, yeah. you know, I mean, when you, somebody sees our vans driving down the street, when they see us you know, pull up to your house or whatever it is for that matter. You know what we're there to do. We take that. Yeah. And this and this was something that you were like really pressing into even even when it was just a couple of guys. Or what yeah. was the stage of thinking in that? Well, when it was just when it was just me, I was, you know, I'll be honest, I, I was probably kind of a little scared and shied away from from being this big or, or being a bigger business because that was, you know, like we were talking about earlier, people, you know, that control or, or knowing it all falls on you can be uh, intimidating. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it was uh, something I decided on my own that if we're going to grow, we're going to take off, we're going to separate and differentiate or separate ourselves from everybody else. Um, what's going to do that? What's going to make us different? And what's, you know, going to you know, separate us from everybody else? I mean, when yeah. I first started, I had a standard white van with our, you know, basically just had the guy that you see in the Turpin's painting beside it. Didn't have any color or anything like that to it. So, right. and I got to look at it and I'm like, I we're not different than anybody else. All I am is, is just a yeah. painter at that point. We're not truly a business. For I mean, I guess I mean I guess they all are. I don't want to offend sure. anybody that that's all they have. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's a big part of what you do. You know, you yeah, want, you want to show people what makes yourself different and and being different. I think people are attracted to that. So I think we all yeah. want to be different and and want to you know separate ourselves. But at the same time, yeah. you're scared to step out there and be different. And wonder what people are going to think. So don't don't let that hold you back or you know. Keep you from doing yeah, I, I love that perspective of not being scared. Uh, and, and and thank you for being aware of not offending people. I, I, I'll let you be that guy and I'm just going to step right in and offend everybody. <laughs> um, because, because it doesn't mean that just because you're not at the seven-figure mark that you don't have a business. But if you're not wanting to get to the seven-figure... And it, it's not, it's not, there's nothing magical about one million. It's just generally as you continue to scale and grow you now have a team and you have more than just you, right? So if you're not at that level and you're listening, your business owns you. Mm -hmm. You have a job. You own your job. Your business owns you. You own your job. You paint. You you do whatever. You 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 make baskets, uh, fruit baskets. If you're an edible arrangements franchisee, one, two, or maybe three unit owner, right? Like that's what you do every day. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But it, the second that you want to try to get more, the second that you want to try to get to seven or eight figures, you have to realize that it can't just be you. It has to be a team. And so everything that now Terp has just said to us is, I got to differentiate. I got to be able to let everybody know why I'm different because I don't want to be just the same as everybody else, especially in contracting. A lot of guys out there doing two, three, four, five hundred thousand. Right. That's the white van guy. And yeah, exactly. One hundred percent. It's just, and, it's, and it's really up to you. You know, you got to be, you know, willing to be different and step out there and do something different. If you're fine with two, three, four, five hundred thousand, that's fine. But if you want to be different, you want to, you know, take it to the next level. You know, you got to do something to separate yourself from from everybody else. So, yeah, hey, I'm gonna throw this at you just because obviously a lot of guys we're t we're kind of on the topic anyway. But you know, we both said if you if you're if you're at two, three, four hundred thousand, you want to stay there. That's fine, right? Like, and that and that is it. Genuinely is. But I think I think actually most guys don't want to stay there, but they do because they either don't know how to get more or they see it as this mountain that's 
I don't know, I don't know how to climb it, or I don't know what tools that I need, right? Or they think like, oh, managing 15 other guys, that sounds like a headache. I don't want the headache. I've heard that many times, right? Can't find good help. I don't want the headache. I'll just do it myself. Yeah. Right. And so uh, you're smiling as I'm saying all this, but like, I don't actually think they want to stay there. They want more. They just either don't know how or they've experienced it a little bit, got bit in the hiney a little bit, and then they kind of running back to, you know, tail tucked between the legs. What What are your thoughts on that? Oh, uh, 100%. I mean, but then, like I said, that all falls back on you. So you attract what you want. So uh, it's not just thoughts, but, you know, if you want better people, um, you got to show, show them something that, you know, that you offer that's better than everybody else. <laughs> yeah, and that's good stuff, man. I mean, I think the the reality there of of but like no, sorry, but going back on what you were saying is, is you got to learn to delegate. That was probably uh, something that my biggest problem is. I wanted to be hands on with everything, so you know, I wanted to touch every part of it. And if it's got my name on it, you know, yeah. nobody else is touching it. This is my baby, and if it's going out the door, it's going to have my sign sealed, you know, delivered, touch right. on everything that I do. And and I just learned that you know you can't do that forever. You know, not if you want to grow. You can't be hands-on with everything. You know, you yeah. got to learn to delegate, know what you're good at, know your value and know the value that, you know, you bring to the table for other people that are actually even looking for a job. So, Yep. hundred percent. Totally in agreement. All right. Flip the script. Bad decision. What did you, <laughs> what did you do in the process of scaling that was like, ah, no, don't do this. Um, and scaling, I don't necessarily have an answer for that. But like I said, that was kind of what I had there was just trying to do everything. You know, when yeah. you're trying to do everything yourself, um, and you want to scale, um, it's, it's impossible. I was running myself, you know, sick, you know, I basically worked myself to death. I was doing estimates in the evening, working during the day, um, trying to bring, I was, you know, working in whites during the day. I'd go home, shower, you know, change, put on my, my button up and everything else, because I thought that's what is going to attract other people. You know, most, right. most, uh, painters in our trade, they just, they go from door to door in their whites and, you know, do their estimates right after work and, and things like that. And I'm like, that's not going to get me in the doors that I think I want to get into. I don't think that's what attracts, you know, customers, you know, I, yeah, yeah, that's everybody knows a painter, but like I said, what don't separate yourself from, from everybody else. So we, yeah. we like to show up and clean and a nice button up like we do. Um, I've even had guys ask me, well, nobody else does that. And I said, well, we're not everybody else. So if you want to be everybody else, you know, there's plenty of other painters around town that that'll do that and they'll yeah. give you a job, but that's not who we are. So, yeah, uh, our process is a little bit different than other people, and uh, the things that we go after, and our market is different than other people. And you know, you got to be willing to to understand that and change. We've had our ups and downs because of that, and and with employees because you know sure. they've had such you know work with other people for so long, and they've had that burned in their head of this right. is how they do it, and right. You know, that's why you know some people don't work out with us just because they don't have an open mind and they aren't willing to change and. Uh, yeah, but 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 you're still going. You're still here. You're still around. Like that didn't that didn't that didn't stop you. <laughs> no, no, no. And we found good people. We found yeah, good guys. Everybody works out. We all mesh, and that's a big part of what you have. You know, you got to do it too. You got to find people that work and mesh in what you do and understand what you do. Yeah, you got to be a good leader and show them. You know, the value that, like I said, that you bring to the table and and what you can offer them if they do their job and do you know what we're all supposed to do. Yeah. You've said, you've said two things kind of hidden um, that I want to pull out for the listener real quick. And, and they're both the same, but for two different aspects of the business. Number one, you said you got to basically um, attract who you want to, like who your clients are, right? If you want a certain part of the market, you got to dress a certain way, act a certain way, get into certain doors, meet certain people, like whatever that's going to take. But you've identified who do I want to work for? Who do I want to be my client? And then, and then you've done things in a specific way. And then and be unashamed about it. Like, this is what we go after. And that's okay. Like, this is this is what we do. Um, and it doesn't mean that I have to help everybody, but I'm going to help this specific sect of people because it's my tribe. And then on the other side, same thing. It's your tribe with your employees. And so as the listeners listening to you talk, I want them just to highlight, you know, and maybe take a little note down is that that one guy that's working for you that kind of gives you a bad attitude, he probably, it, and you're scared to let him go or whatever, like, he probably just needs to be let go anyway because there's someone else out there who's better. There's someone who's out, not, not even a better like person, but just better fit for you, a part of yeah. your tribe. It doesn't right? mean they're a bad painter or something, nothing against them, but they, yeah. don't, they don't have the vision that you have. So yeah. we don't see exactly. what you're, what you're I just want to know, do you make all the guys in your team have a big beard like that? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, no, but I think it's, uh, <laughs> it's kind of grown on them though because... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Guys that didn't have beards have beards now. So. Uh huh. That's right. Well, and 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 so it is as leadership goes, right? Like 
as a good leader goes, eventually the team, let us say, walk, talk, and quack like the leader. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't mean that that it, that they have to, to your point. But but man, if if you're someone that someone who wants to follow, why wouldn't they want the beard or want their lifestyle or want to be part of your team or you know whatever? So I think that that attraction piece that you're talking about. Is huge. Yeah, you set the tone. I mean, that's that's any business owner and in, in any trade or any industry for that that matter. You set the tone for for what you're trying to do. So if you come in with a bad attitude or we're just, we're just painters or we're just another company, that's what, that's people you're going to track. That's what you're going to get. So, you know, it's a big part. So you got to really think about that stuff when, you know, just day to day, just coming in in the morning, it isn't, you know, it isn't just a polo or whatever it is that, you know, the color in the background, you know, it's it's the way you talk to them. Um, Right. You know, it's the way you treat them being involved in their lives. um, You know, doing what you can to help them out and show them that, you know, you want to bring value to them and, you know, improve their life, not just your own. Exactly. A hundred percent. All right. We're going to switch it over to the speed round here real quick. And first question in the speed round is, uh, I'm always, it's, it's one of my favorites. Okay. So if you could only pick one metric, you said you're a numbers guy. So I'm, I'm really curious about your answer. If you can only pick one metric in the business to track, what would it be? Uh, this is kind of, well, I got a couple. So I would say your product progress in production in our trade, you got to know, um, uh, you got to know your numbers. You got to know your burn rate. Uh, you got to know uh, what you, you know, what it, what it takes to run your day to day every day. So not everybody's going to operate the same and not everybody's going to be able to produce the same amount of work. So you may know what you do and how fast you move, but not everybody's always going to move as fast as the owner and have that kind of kind of work energy or that energy when they approach things. So, sure. um, but something I think is, you know, something you really can't put a, put a number on or, or track by value or a number or something like that is energy. Um, if I could really, yeah. you know, just, just know the energy coming into my shop every day. Um, yeah. and even days that I'm not here, knowing that there's good energy, knowing the leaders, the people I have in place have the same mindset that I do and, uh, kind of same work ethic to get things done and, you know, to lead and to be a leader, uh, it's huge. So, yeah. you know, like I said, we, you know, people with bad attitudes, you know, personal problems in life and things that they just, they bring in that, you know, weigh them down or bring them down. You know, you got to have people that, that think like you and, you know, are willing to help everybody else out and help raise everybody up. So, yeah, man, I love the answer. Um, I think it's the first time we've had on the show, the answer of energy specifically, but the way that you described it is, is hundred percent. I'm, I'm in full agreement. Okay. For the six figure earner right now, or the, for the six figure business owner right now is listening. What book should he read to help him get to six figures or seven figures? Sorry. One of my favorites, uh, actually got it, got it here right beside me is, uh, get shit done by Jeffrey Gittimer. So good book. Um, I read this actually on my way back from vacation one time, picked, actually picked it up in the airport and, uh, was just looking for something good to read on the way home. Yeah. Um, and he's, uh, man, he, he gets straight down to it. So he, does. you know, he, he doesn't beat around the bush. Let you know, you know, everything you need to do, you know, being accountable for yourself. Um, yeah. You know, knowing that, you know, all these little things matter and factor into what you're doing and, uh, you know, your you know, production, um, things like that. Or, you know, when you procrastinate, um, it creates anxiety, which then in turn leads to lack of production. That's and right. so, you know, he, he basically kind of lays it out for you. He tells you exactly what to do, what you need to do and, uh, you know, steps to, to get there to where you want to go. So. Love that. Love that. Good. Um, next question is, do you intentionally network or mastermind with other entrepreneurs? Uh, yeah, well, I kind of luck out. I got a good group of friends where we all kind of think out of the box and think differently. So love it. Uh, um, maybe a lot of treasure, a lot of all my really close friends have all moved out to California. So, uh, or moved to different okay. cities or, or different States. So yeah, um, travel a lot to meet with them and talk with them because you know they're pushing the boundaries and their markets too and the businesses they own and what they do. So yeah, um, we also network. Um, I also network with just just other guys in town. I'm part of a, sure. a group that's called 100 Guys Who Care. So we all donate 100 dollars every quarter of the year. You know, we all want to help out and do things, um, but you know, doing it on your own can be tough and it's and it's hard to make a change when you're doing it by yourself. So. Yeah, hundred people, hundred dollars, ten thousand uh, dollars, four times a year. Um, we give it out to a nonprofit, local non- nonprofit in town. And at the same time, you get to you get to meet with these guys, talk about them, talk about their vision, um, talk about things they're working on, and you know, kind of just raise the standard and, and raise the bar and try and do better for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. I love that. That's good stuff. Okay, and then last question, um, maybe the 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 fan favorite is if you lost it all, there was no more turpin painting. 
No more, no more uh, bearded team members. <laughs> what would you do, Terp? What would you do? Uh, I, I thought about this. Uh, I thought about this uh, a lot of times. Uh, what I would do if something were to happen, or you know, whatnot. But I would say uh, I probably have to get into uh, probably probably some kind of health field or uh, fitness or something like that because I think those things go hand in hand with running a business and, and being part of a team. Yeah. Um, being part of a team has always been important to me. Uh, I think we all need something to be a part of to find meaning in life. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think uh, health is very important to your mindset and to be productive. So if this were to end or something were to happen, I'd have to go probably around that, go down that route just because I know that's something that helps my mental stability, uh, my mindset, you know, health is wealth. And, you know, my to me, it kind of, Fitness wasn't always one of those things for me, but I feel like I sh- my mind strengthened when my body strengthened. So I got into fitness, got into working out, and just tried to tra- strengthen myself because that's when kind of when we started to grow was I ruptured a disc in my back. Wow. And, uh, so, you know, I didn't want to have surgery. I was 31 uh, when that happened. And I was like, I don't need back surgery at 31. I don't want that. Right. Yeah. I don't need 31. If I want to do that, I want to at least wait till I'm, till I'm older. Cause I feel like once you start, it's one of those things that just, it just keeps going. So, yeah. So what'd you do? So, um, started working out, uh, got yeah. a trainer for a little bit, um, okay. to learn to know the ropes. Cause that, well, like I said, it wasn't my forte. So, uh, you know, dug in, you know, and that kind of helped, you know, lead to everything else. So yeah. we started, um, uh, he was actually my trainer, uh, was looking to open his business, his own business himself here now in town, which he does have open. But at the time we were, uh, get up at four o'clock in the morning to go, uh, work out before, uh, even going to work. So yeah, that, that led to just, you know, me getting up earlier, me, you know, kind of setting my night. You know, I think that's where a lot of it starts too, is production on your next day starts the day before. 100%. So, so if you're staying up late at night, drinking, you partying, whatever it is you do, or just watching shows, wasting time, you know, watching meaningless shows that don't get you anywhere. Yeah. Um, you know, you gotta, you gotta start the night before and, and make notes and, take notes of things you're going to do and what you want to get done and uh, clear your head and clear that head space so you can uh, get up and be productive the next day. Plus you, you gain a lot of hours when you get up early in the morning. Uh, you know, you just, you get a lot more done. I mean, I get up at right. four o'clock almost every morning. So I got a half day in by the time most people are just getting their day started. I've done got my workout in. I got a good breakfast. Um, then got to the office early, then check the weather. It's a big part of what we do. Sure. Uh, yep. So it's just, you know, going over everything, going over our scheduling, going over what's coming up, you know, it's just, you, you know, you get your head in that and you're more, you're more clear in the morning, you know, oh, a lot yeah. of people will claim, you know, I, well, I'm more of a night person and this and that and the other. No, that's just like what you like to do more, you know, but it's not getting you to where you want to go. Right. You know, that's the thing, you know, they're like, yeah, I like to do this stuff, but why am I not getting where I want to go? Well, because those things you're doing in the evening lead to your success or failure in the morning. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I loved how you said. I mean, first off, you waited till the end to give us all your good stuff, bro. First off, <laughs> um, but I want to say to you um, that I, not, not only do I agree with you, but because I think of shows and just wasting time, and it's just like pfft, I'm just not interested in that. Haven't ever really been interested in that. But when when I look back on my history of building multiple locations, even getting into multiple industries for a period of time in there, I was still I, like I went back to work to just like make money to put into real estate, even while I was running multiple businesses. And a lot of people thought I was crazy for that. But for me, it was like five o'clock was halftime. Right. You know, so I was up early, like you're saying, and and I was getting in hours in my business and then I was going to work. And then I was taking a, you know, lunch on my business, you know, working on my businesses because I had multiple businesses even at that point. And then mm-hmm. at five o'clock, everybody was going home to watch TV shows and I was going home to work. Right. And and some people listen to that and they're like, oh, well, I mean, wife and kids and you're just a workaholic. And it's like, yeah, like I get it. I really do. First off, there are guys who are built differently. And if you're listening to this show, I'm going to go ahead and guess that you're one of them because you say that you want more. You want to try to get to the seven bigger mark. Right. It, and and you, don't, you don't get those things by doing what everybody else does to Terp's point here. And so I really think that he's given you some super practical things, even just in the last like three minutes that have been just super valuable. I've always wanted to, like I wanted to like, you know, root for team wolf, you know, team Terp. Right. You know, I don't want to let, watch some other, you know, game or, or TV show, let someone else be famous. And not, not that I have a desire to be famous per se, but I wanted to vote for me. Or I wanted, I wanted to, I wanted to cheer my team on my, my family. Why not me? Why not, me? Why not you? Why, why does it have to be everybody else? You know, why can't we, why can't we do that? And as long as you're spectating to that other person, it's going to be them. 
right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, and another thing I like to say is you got to attack life before life attacks you. Because believe me, it's going to throw things. It's going to throw curveballs at you all day long. <laughs> Go back to my, my sports <laughs> analogies there. Um, I love that. I throw that one around all the time. But you're going to get curveballs all the time in life. So if you don't, if you, you know, you wake up with this defeated mindset or you wake up with, oh shit, what the hell's life going to throw at me today? Or, right. you know, you know, you got to wake up with that mentality as I'm going to attack life. You know, I'm going to take control of my business. I'm going to take control of whatever comes my way today. I'm not going to let it beat me down because there's going to be things that are going to go wrong. And that's going to, tr- that's going to trickle off into your life and your, your business and, and the way you treat your guys and everything else that you do. So if you're defeated, yeah. some half these people are defeated before they wake up. You know, they, they want to get there, and they, but they don't know why they're not getting there. Well, you know, what's your mindset? You know, you got to, exactly. mindset's a huge part of what, what we 100%, do. 100%. 100%. Dude, you've given us so much value. Um, thank you for that. If anybody's listening today and they want to connect with you, how would they how would they find you? Uh, you can LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, uh, to search Chad Turpin. Uh, Turpin with an E N, not I N. A lot of people like to spell it I N. Or you can find Turpin's painting on uh, Facebook or Instagram, either one of those things. So just look for the okay. big uh, color wheel in the background. Kind That's of separates right. away from everybody else. So it's hard to miss. So That's right. And and if you shoot him a message that says, Hey Turp, he'll know that you listen to this show. <laughs> <laughs> right, you might get a little better reaction, quicker response. I think we're friends already. So that's a, that's awesome, man. Well, dude, um, I, I so appreciate uh, just you taking some time here today. Um, I know that it, it you know, that uh, you stepped away from other things with your business and your team and stuff like that. And so, thank you on behalf of the listeners, on behalf of me. Just uh, getting to know a guy like you is incredible. And so, thank you for that. Um, best of luck in all that you do. And I'm sure we'll have to circle back again and and uh, see your progress here, even the next coming year. I'm sure you guys are crushing it. So, Oh yeah, we're definitely going to have to catch up. And I appreciate the opportunity too. I hope I was able to help some of these guys out and give some kind of insight into uh, things they didn't If they in. were paying attention, you helped them. That's for sure. <laughs> I appreciate it, buddy. Thanks for listening to Gathering the Kings. We hope you got a ton of value today and learned a thing or two about taking your business to seven figures and beyond. If you desire more and want a community around you to help you get there, I want you to go to gatheringthekings.com. That's gatheringthekings.com. And I want you to apply for our next Becoming a King 90-Day Intensive. We are extremely exclusive by nature as a group. What that means is that we're really wanting only the entrepreneurs who take their business and targets super serious to apply. So if that's you, you think you got what it takes to level up your business, I want you to go to gatheringthekings.com and apply. And we will see you on the other side.